Gee whiz. Hello, friends. My name is John Henderson. Welcome to this series of old-time radio show episodes called Gee Whiz. These are stories of the schemes, trials, and loves of the typical American teenagers, Andy Hardy, Archie Andrews, and Henry Aldridge. Henry Aldridge will always be known for the radio show The Aldridge Family, but they also made movies like 1944's Henry Aldridge Plays Cupid. Excuse me, please. I seem to have missed someone. I wonder if you boys have seen a tall, handsome man with shoulders about so broad. I know the man you're looking for. Uh, we're friends of his. He, he sent you those. Here is the Aldridge family from June 11th, 1942. To a teenage boy, each new day is a new world. Filled with all sorts of discoveries and excitement. And even mishaps. Which always envy. So it is with Henry Aldrich. The scene opens at the telephone in Aldrich Front Hall. It is Saturday morning. Hello? Hello? Oh, how are you, Gladys? Fine, you know? Fine. Gee, it's swell to hear your voice. Nice to hear yours, too. It is? My goodness, yes. <laughs> Who is it? Oh, uh, Henry. Henry, Henry Aldrich? Yeah. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> Oh, just a minute, Gladys. Yes, Mother? Please come and eat your breakfast. Sure, Mother. Just as soon as I find out one thing from Gladys. What thing, Henry? Oh, I... Uh, uh, do you remember last Thursday, Gladys? I think I do. You mean you don't remember making a date with me? Oh, of course I do. How could I forget that? When was it for? <laughs> oh, tonight. And the reason I called, Gladys, about what time do you want me to come over? What time? Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure whether you wanted me to come in time for... For, uh... For what? Well, I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to barge in right in the middle of your... Your, uh... How does 5.30 sound? 5.30? Oh, isn't that a little early? It is? It isn't? Well, well how about 6? Is that too early? Well, why not make it 6.30? 6.30? How does that sound? Sure, 6.30 is a nice round number. Uh, only, uh, is that before... Well, that is, would that be after? Yes. Henry! Well, 6.30 will be fine, Gladys. I'll be there. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm coming, Mother. Your breakfast is getting cold. Alice, can you reach the cream, please? Here you are, dear. Thank you. Father. Yes, Henry? Father, you've had quite a bit of experience eating. I beg your pardon? Fantastic grapefruit down to Henry. Uh, what I mean is uh, people sometimes invite you over to their house for dinner, don't they? There have been occasions. Why do you ask? Well, Father, when someone invites you over to their house at 6.30, does that mean it's for dinner or just social? What's that? Henry, please eat your grapefruit. When I've got something on my mind? Dear, the best way to get something off your mind is to put something in your stomach. Now, start on your grapefruit. Yes, Mother. <laughs> oh. Henry. Did I get you, Father? You did. <laughs> Do you see how upset I am, Mother? Alice, let him ask me whatever he's going to. But, Sam... Breakfast won't be safe until he does. Now, who's invited you to dinner? That's it. I don't know. What? I mean, I know who it is, sure, but I'm not sure they are. Are what? Sure. Alice. <laughs> yes, Sam? Alice, he's your son. Translation, please. Don't you understand, Father? No. It's perfectly simple. I've got a date tonight with Gladys Prentice, and I'm not sure whether eating goes with it or not. Oh, that seems simple to me. Did she invite you? Well, she told me to be sure and be there no later than 6.30. 6.30? Yes, Mother. I got the idea that was the absolute deadline. Well, it certainly sounds like dinner. Well, this sounds like nothing of the sort. It might easily be after dinner. Now, Sam, Mabel Prentice was a cabin all before she was married, wasn't she? What's that got to do with it? Well, her father was a railroad engineer. Henry, she's your mother. Translation, please. <laughs> Here, they live right across the street from us, and I know Mr. Cavanaugh's train got in at 6.15, and they never ate before 6.30. Oh, boy, you mean I'm really invited? No, Henry, let's not be hasty. But you heard what Mother said. They always eat at 6.30. It's in their blood. There's a very simple way to find out if you're invited to dinner. There is? How? Phone Gladys and ask her. Ask her? Right out? Why not? Well, Father, I couldn't. Gee, if she wasn't expecting me, she'd think I wanted an invitation. 
Why don't you? Sam. Look, suppose I do this. Toby Smith lives next door to Gladys. Maybe he could tell me whether they eat before or after 6.30. Then eat your grapefruit first. But, Mother, don't you think I should find Henry, out? Henry, do as your mother says. But, Father. Henry. Yes, sir. Now, start eating. Oh, Henry. Gee whiz, Mother. Did I get you in the eye, too? Now, see here. Sam, for heaven's sake, let him go make his phone call. <laughs> Tell me what you think. I think you're not wiping those dishes very well, Gladys. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. And if we're lending our best china to Aunt Mabel for her engagement party tonight, we certainly want to send them over cream. Yes, ma'am. But doesn't it sound to you as though Henry meant what I think he meant? Well, frankly, dear, I think you may be jumping to conclusions. But why would he want to come over so early if he isn't taking me out to dinner? Now, Gladys, the wisest thing for you to do is phone Henry and find out definitely just what he had in mind. Oh, mother, I just couldn't. Why not? Suppose he wasn't planning on taking me to dinner. My goodness, I'd just die of embarrassment. Oh, now, Gladys. Whether I would, I'd die right here in a heap. Well, what if he's... Oh, well, my goodness. You didn't break a plate, did you? No, but I could have sworn I saw somebody up in that big elm tree, right there in our backyard. You, you did? And, Mother, you know who it looked like? Who? Oh, but it couldn't be. What would Henry Aldridge be doing up in our elm tree? <laughs> Just phoned the Brown. They'll join us? Yes, dear. And Elizabeth had the same reaction I did. Imagine going out to dinner for no reason whatsoever. Well, why not? Henry's having dinner at the Prentices. You deserve a day off. Why not? Just the same, Sam. I can't help being thrilled. What time do you tell the Browns to meet us? Seven. And, dear, don't you think you should call the mansion house for a reservation? That won't be necessary. But suppose it's crowded. Alice, I'm positive it won't be. Besides, the head waiter knows me very well. I can always get a table. Boy, Mother, look at my blue serge suit. Mary hung her Angora sweater right next to it. Dear, I'm sure we can clean it up. Clean it up? Could, well, could you do it now, Mother? It's only five more hours until 6.30, and I can't go looking like a bull weevil. <laughs> Henry... I don't like to seem overcautious, but I'd just like to ask once more. Are you absolutely certain you're invited to dinner at the Prentices? Sam, he said he was positive. He's been positive before. But, Father, I told you what I saw with my own eyes when I just happened to be up in their elm tree this morning. She was, would they be getting out their best china just to eat with each other? I'll be right there, Homer. Sam, I still think you should phone for reservations. Boy, Henry, am I a lucky dog? Am I a lucky dog? You are? Why? I don't have to eat home tonight. Is that right? Sure, didn't you hear? My folks are going out with your folks for dinner, and they gave me a dollar and a half to blow in on any kind of dinner I want. No kidding, a whole dollar and a half? Mm -hmm. Together with the quarter I just earned, I'll be able to eat myself sick. <laughs> Boy, am I a lucky dog. Well, Homer, wait till I tell you about me. Then why don't you get some money from your parents and we'll stuff ourselves together. Well, that's just it. That's just it, Homer. I'm sort of invited out to dinner tonight. You are? Where? To Gladys Prentices. No kidding. Sure. That's funny. I just delivered something there from the cleaners. I'm glad I didn't mention anything about feeding you. <laughs> Homer, you see this blue serge suit? Yeah. I'm even cleaning Mary's Angora off it. That's how sure I am. Gee, are you a lucky dog. I, mean, I don't think you better wear your blue serge suit. Why not? Because the thing I delivered was an evening gown. Evening gown? Sure. They told the cleaners they had to have it for tonight. Tonight? Oh, boy. Henry, what's the matter? Oh, oh, boy. Homer, you don't suppose that dinner is formal, do you? In a tuxedo? Sure. And, boy, my father didn't even think I was important enough for good china. Gladys, would you uh, zip me up the back, please? Yes, Mother. And look, why don't I do this? Why don't I call all the restaurants in town and see if Henry has made a reservation? Here, that's very foolish. Uh, am I zipped uh, all the way? Well, could you inhale just a little bit more, Mother? You know, I I think that cleaner shrunk this gown. Mother, why don't you wear my new gown over that label? Well, I'm much too bony, dear. Oh, which reminds me. Your father and I have been discussing that evening gown, Gladys, and, uh, well, uh, we think it might be wise to sew on a little lace around the shoulders. But, Mother, I'm not pony. We realize that. 
That's why we thought some uh, lace would add a great deal. But, my uh, dear, you know how easily you catch cold. In a year or two, when you build up your resistance, we can take the lace off and uh, answer the phone. Please. Yes, ma'am. Hello? All right, Gladys. This is Henry. Hello, Henry. Mother, Henry. Oh, that's fine, dear. Now, ask him about tonight. Hello? 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 How, how are you? Fine. How are you? Fine. I, I'll see you at 6.30, won't I? Sure, I'll see you at 6.32, won't I? Yes. Oh, and Gladys. Yes, Henry? I just want you to know I never look forward to a meal more. What? I Henry, I... could you hold on? Mother, dear. Henry, dear. Henry, are you sure? Henry, would you mind repeating that again? About dinner, I mean. Repeat it? Mother, Oh, I said was I'm looking forward to eating with you tonight. Well, what do you know? Shouldn't I have said it? Of course you should. Henry, I'm so glad you called. You are? Well, uh, uh, look, Gladys, I've got a little what you might call a problem about dinner tonight. Problem? Henry, nothing's going wrong at your end, has it? No, things are fine at my end. That's fine. How are they at yours? Fine. Only, would you mind very much if I wore a maroon tie? A maroon tie? With my tuxedo. See, with somehow my black one seems to have disappeared completely. Tuxedo? You're wearing a tuxedo tonight? Didn't you want me to? Why, well, yes, yes, of course I did. Well? Well, honey, I have to hurry and hang up now. I'll see you at 6.30. Goodbye. Goodbye? Mother! Mother, you'll have to show on that lace on my evening gown right away. <laughs> Let's cross over. Gladys lives on this block. Homer, in a formal dinner, which fork do you use first? They have more than one. Oh, of course. Well, I start at the end and work toward my place. And that makes sense. And Henry, if you were me, would you get the businessman special at the Main Street Diner or the table to hold at Hamburger Paradise? Oh, well, if well, I were you, you get something under your belt like a good solid bowl of soup and invest the rest in dessert. Gee, I don't know. Boy, here I am with a dollar seventy-five, and I don't know how to eat it up. Can you make this out? What is it? A menu I picked up from the Purple Goose. Does this at the bottom say all meals served with salad and potatoes, or salad or potatoes? Why? Are... Or is it potato salad? Oh, Homer, I haven't got time to fool around. Here's Gladys's house. So long. Yeah, so long. Is that Armenian restaurant over in South Avenue? Armenian? I might as well cover the field. So long. Hello, Henry. Oh, gee. Hi, Gladys. I was just about to knock. I saw you coming up the walk. Come in. My goodness, but you look handsome in that tuxedo. I do. <laughs> gee, you look pretty handsome yourself. I do? Boy. That's some gown. Wait till you see it after I build up my resistance. <laughs> I'm certainly looking forward to this evening. <laughs> so am I. Well, here's my hat. You taking it off? <laughs> you don't think I should? Yes, yes, of course. I'll put it right here on the hall table for the time being. Sure. Boy, I sure am hungry. <laughs> so am I. Yes, sir. Yes. Mmm, what's that I smell? You smell something? I'll say. Mmm, sure smells good. Oh, that's taboo. It is? I've never eaten any. <laughs> that's my perfume, Shelly. Perfume? Huh? Oh, oh, sure. Here, Henry. Uh, would you like a glass of tomato juice? Tomato juice? My mother thought you might like some before, uh, before... Before what? Oh, excuse me, honey. He was on the phone. Hello? And this is Mrs. Aldridge. Could I speak to Henry, please? Yes, Mrs. Aldridge. Tell me, Mr. Mike. Oh, it is. Thanks, Gladys. I'll be in the living room. Hello, Mother. Dear, your father and I are just about to leave for the mansion house. Is everything all right? All right. About dinner, I mean. Oh, why, oh, we haven't started to eat yet, but they just served the tomato juice. They did? Sure. <laughs> we should be going into the dining room for the rest of it any minute now. Well, have a good time. And Henry. Yes, Mother? If Mrs. Prentice is using a new tablecloth, keep an eye on your elbows. Sure, Mother. I'll keep an eye on everything. Goodbye. Good time. Henry, I don't want to rush you, but it's nearly seven. It is? Well, where's your mother and father? My mother and father? Henry, did you want them to have dinner with us, too? Why? I don't know. I mean, my goodness, they just left for my Aunt Mabel's engagement party. 
we're going to eat alone? Why, yes. Yeah. Well, just the two of us? Yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> you want to be started? Gee, I'm ready any time you are. Sure. Here's your hat. <laughs> you mean you want me to put on my hat? <laughs> Don't you think you should? Oh, sure. I just didn't realize it was going to be that formal. <laughs> I've ever had a formal dinner with any boy in private. <laughs> Me too. I mean, you know. Wait, to be perfectly honest, this is the first time I've ever been invited out to dinner. Is that a... Fu- <laughs> invited out? Tell me what's wrong. Why, you uh... You invited out to dinner, didn't you? Why, uh... Sure. Oh, I thought I might have misunderstood you. My goodness, this is going to be a night I'll never forget. It will? Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be one I'll never forget either. Now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Olmer. Because his date with Gladys Prentiss began at 6.30, Henry jumped to the conclusion that he'd been invited to dinner. After a quick tomato juice cocktail, however, he learned that Gladys expected to be taken out to dinner. The scene opens in the lobby of the Mansion House restaurant. It is dinner time. Now, see here. Mr. Aldrich, you're raising your voice. I'm not raising it. Besides, I have every right to. I've been coming here to the Mansion House regularly for 15 years now, and this is no time to tell me they have no table. Naturally, I'm very sorry, sir, but you should have phoned for reservation. <laughs> That's beside the point. Let me speak to the head waiter. I'm the head waiter. I mean the head waiter with a bald head. He left six months ago. He couldn't have. But he did. Now, you're the one who's raising your voice. I'm sorry. Mr. Aldrich, I'm willing to give you a table. I'm I'm anxious to. But it'll have to be one on the side of the room. But I can't sit behind those palms. I'm allergic to them. To palms? The last time we sat behind them, I sneezed from the fruit cup right through the strawberry shortcake. <laughs> you said they have to give us a table in the middle of the room. Very well, Mr. Aldrich, very well. But you'll have to wait at least 40 minutes. 40 minutes? At least. Now, just a moment. The Browns will be here any second, and they're counting on us to have made the arrangement. I'm sorry, but... Sorry. After we've been coming here for 15 years, all you can say is you're sorry. Alex, please, you're raising your voice. Henry, we're not really going to have dinner here in the mansion house, are we? We might. I mean, that depends on whether you happen to see my mother and father in there in the dining room. Good evening, sir. Just two? Why, could I speak to the head waiter? I'm afraid not. He went home about an hour ago with a very severe headache. Oh. Well, Gladys, do you mind if I talk to the waiter for one second? Is anything wrong, Henry? No, no. Excuse me. Look, waiter, do you happen to know my mother and father? I'm not sure I've had the pleasure. Well, they're eating here tonight, see, and I thought under the circumstances they might like to have us join them and put everything on one check. I'll only be a second, Gladys. A young man, what do your parents look like? Look like? Well, gee whiz, I've never thought of them looking like anything before. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, my mother looks like... Like... Have you ever seen my grandmother? There's not. Oh, well, that, 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 that's too bad. They're the image of each other. I'm afraid I can't help you, son. Uh, Gladys, what are you doing at that table? It's all free and I grab it. Get up with your... Sit down, Henry. Here, I've got a menu for you. Gladys, I... My goodness, look at these prices. Aren't they just terrible? Oh, thanks. Waiter. Waiter. Someone calling me? It's me over by the doorway. Oh, yes, sir. Have you and the young lady decided on your order? Why, she's still having a little trouble making up her mind. And while she is, I thought I'd ask you, do you have an easy credit plan? <laughs> easy credit? Yes, sir. The easier, the better. No, I'm afraid not. Oh. Well, will you be taking on any help for the summer? We're closed for the summer. Oh. Yes, we usually do. Just look at that. You see my parents? What? Uh, no, no, but look at that young man with his nose pressed against the front window. Where? Right next to the menu. Go away, young man. Go away. Oh, boy, it's Homer. Excuse me. Please tell him he's smudging the entire window. Homer. Boy, am I glad I found you. Wait, Just look at these prices. Homer, you haven't eaten already. No, and I'm certainly not going to eat here. Boy, you have to be a millionaire. I know, and that's why you have to lend me your dollar seventy-five. Are you crazy, Henry? 
back for my dinner. Oh, but don't you want to save me from a terrible disgrace? Not if it's going to cost me a dollar seventy-five. I thought you were eating your glasses. So did I, but somehow I'm taking her here instead. So, Homer, won't you please let me have that money? No. Haven't you any humanity? Not with my son that's involved. <laughs> okay, Homer, okay. Well, you're in a spot sometime. Just come to me for help. Just come to me. Well, hey, that's hey. okay, Homer. Pal. Oh. Look, Henry, suppose I do this. I'll give you part of my money, say, 75 cents. That's all? That's all I can afford. Now stand back while I get it out of my pocket. It's all in change. Here, 25. You can make it an even dollar. No. 50. But even their Swiss cheese sandwiches start at 45 cents. I'm sorry. 62, 3, 4. Homer, I beg of Henry, you. stop grabbing. But Homer. Henry. Now look what you've done. See what you mean? Your money went down this grate? Every last cent. And you better go down there and get it. In my tuxedo? Uh, young man, the young lady wanted to know if duck and orange sauce would be all right with you. Well, I'll tell you. Tell I... me, what about my money? Well, look, mister, could, could you tell me where this grate leads to? The cellar, I believe. Homer, if I go down there and get your money, could I have a dollar? Henry, this is blackmail. I'm afraid you can't go down there, young man. Why not? The cellar window's been bricked up for years. What? Oh, boy. <laughs> I think I'll have Brussels sprouts with my duck. Yes, ma'am. Brussels sprouts? So will I. Now, wait a minute, Holmes. Uh, let me run over that order again. Before you do that, waiter, could I have a little private talk with my friend? Again, Henry? Well, just be a second. Come on, Homer. I'll take my menu with me. Henry, I'm starving. Gladys, why don't you have a roll while we're waiting? Listen, Homer, won't you please go home? No, you lost my dollar seventy-five, and the least you can do is feed me. But I, I told you I don't have a cent. So what? As long as you're not going to be able to pay, what difference does it make if you don't pay for two or three? <laughs> well, you can't you at least go easy. Well, okay. Suppose I just have a Swiss cheese sandwich with Swiss cheese. What? I mean, but look, Homer, what's Swiss tea? Just a lot of holes. It's the bread that's really nourishing. So? So they give you all the bread you want for nothing. Listen, Henry, I want more than bread for my dollar seventy-five. Sure you do, Homer, sure you do. And you can have all the ketchup and mustard you can eat. Oh, boy, and I thought this was my lucky day. I'm glad as Homer and I are ready to order. But, Henry, the waiter was getting very impatient. I already ordered for you. What? Duck dinner's for three. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. So here he comes now with our first course. Gladys, before he comes, could I explain one thing to you? Here you are. Oh, oh waiter. Uh, yes, sir. I, I, I think I think I'd better have another little talk with you. Privately. Yes, sir. But first, here's the check. And the check? Before we eat. Here you are. Gladys, pass me a couple of rolls, quick. Wait, is this, is this number a five? Uh, can you reach the butter? What number, sir? Look, this one with the dollar sign in front of oh, it. Then please pass the celery. Yes, sir. That's a five. Oh, boy. Oh, did you know you put a radish in your pocket? I did. Oh, look, waiter, there's something I have to tell you. Sir, there's something I have to tell you. That check pays. Pays? Pays? My goodness, what's going on? Well, who paid it? There's a note on the back that explains things. Turn it over, Henry. Well, gee whiz. So what does it say? Maybe in the future we'll all be a little less positive and a little more careful. Well, who's saying this? Nobody. Who did you say? Thank you, Robert. Well, gee whiz. Father, is that you behind that palm? <laughs> Homer cost you a pretty penny when we got it for free for my father? Oh, sure, but I'll have to pay and pay and pay. Homer, what are you talking about? She was Agnes for me at the mansion house with Gladys. She did? And now she's so mad she'll never foot the bills for the movies or a banana split for us again. That was the Aldrich family from 1942, and now, the Archies. <laughs> Thank you. 
In this episode of Archie, they use a saying about Mrs. Astor. Now, that refers to Caroline Astor, wife of the wealthy William Astor. Mrs. Astor was known for dressing lavishly in New York high society parties from the late 1800s. So, here in the 40s, if somebody was done up and seeming self-important, they might be called Mrs. Astor's plush horse. It was an insult implying the person was done up as though they were a pet dressed by Mrs. Astor. They also mentioned sportscaster Clem McCarthy, who would announce the biggest boxing fights. And they're ready with a bell just about to ring. And there we are. And Lewis hooks a left to Max's head quickly and shoots over a hard right to Max's head. Lewis, a left to Max's jaw, a right to his head. Max shoots a hard right to Lewis. Lewis with the old one-two. So here is Archie from July 6th, 1946. Jughead, this is Archie. Come over right away. It's a matter of life or death. Oh, relax, Archie. Relax. Yes, and you relax too, folks, if you can, because here he is again, right out of the pages of Archie Comics magazine with all his gang, Archie Andrews! <laughs> Well, as we pay our weekly visit to the friendly little town of Riverdale, we find Archie and his bosom companion Jughead walking down the street on a very, very important mission. It seems the boys are going... Swimming. Boy, what a day for swimming. Yeah. I can hardly wait to get to that diving board, Jug. I can see me now. Sailing high into the air as I perform a graceful swan dive. Archie, you always hold your nose and jump in, and you know it. Jug, I'm one of the best... Uh Uh-oh, what's the matter? Here comes Butch McGonagall. Gee, let's cross the street. Two ladies seen us. Gee whiz, be careful, Archie. Ah, quit worrying, Jug. I'm not afraid of that Butch McGonagall. Not the least bit of you. Hello, Butch. Hello, Butch. Hello, Butch what? Uh, uh, Hello, Butch, sir. That's better. Archie, I thought you said you... Jug, for gosh sake, be quiet. Why should he be quiet? (laughs) No reason, Butch. What, are you bullying or something? Oh, no, sir, no, sir. If anybody's going to do any bullying around here, it'll be me. You know what I mean? Yes, Butch. Okay. Now, Jughead, go ahead and talk all you want. Okay, I... That's enough. (laughs) Now... What's a big secret going on around here anyways? Secret? Bo- you heard me. What was this trip going to say that you wouldn't let him say? Come on. Well, he was going to say that... Butch, let go of my tie. Come on. Well, he was going to say that I'm uh, that not afraid of you. Oh. So you're not afraid of me, huh? Oh, but I would just... <laughs> Oh, my nose. And next oh. time, don't be so oh. smart, see? Oh. So long, wise guy. Oh. So long, Butch. Sir. Oh, fine friend you are, Jug. Why didn't you do something when he socked me? I did. What? I winced. <laughs> That's a lot of help. Uh, but, Jug, I'm not going to take this lying down. Help me up. Here. Uh, thanks. Yes, sir, I'm going to fix that, Butch. Yes, sir. He's going to regret this day. I'll fix him. Gee whiz, Archie. What are you going to do? What am I going to do, Jug? What any full-blooded man would do in my place. Go to the library for a book on boxing. (laughs) Jug, just listen to this. It says, A good boxer knows how to defend himself at all times. The best offense in the world is useless without a good defense. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. It says, take a position as shown in the illustration. Hmm. That's like this, I guess. Yeah. In that position, you are invulnerable. See, Jug, already I'm invulnerable. Is that good? Of course it's good. Boy, oh boy. Wait till I meet that butch again. Archie! Archie! What you doing? Hi, Betty. I'm busy. Now, it says here... Mind if I sit down? No, go ahead. Now, it says here, Jug... Move over, Jug. Okay. The boxer is now able to parry a blow from any direction whatsoever. Gee whiz, let's try it, Jug. I'm tired. Oh, come on, Jug. Just stand here for a minute, can't you? No. 
Gosh, you're a lot of help, you are. Can I help, Archie? Oh, no, you can... Hey, yeah, I guess you could at that. Okay, what do I do? Well, you stand here and put your hands up like mine are. Yeah, that's right. Now, try and hit me. Oh, but I don't want to fight. Oh, I'm not going to fight with you, Betty. I just want you to try and hit me. But I might hurt you. Oh, Betty, don't be silly. You won't even come near me. I'm invulnerable. Now, go ahead. Swing hard. Well, okay. Ooh. Archie, speak to me. Gee whiz. Oh, well, I'm all right, I guess. But, Betty, would you do me a favor? Yes, Archie. Take this book and throw it in the ash can. Miss Simmons, take a letter. Hobar Manufacturing Company. Gentlemen, in re yours of the... Oh, good grief. It's all right. I'll get it. Oh. Fred? Oh, <laughs> hello, dear. Fred, you'd better be home early tonight. Uh, why? What's up? Mrs. Lodge is coming over. Mrs. Lodge? That old bat... Oh, you mean about our joining the country club? Yes, dear. Gosh, are we accepted? Well, not yet, dear. This is an interview tonight. Oh, interview? Yes, you know how fussy they are. Mrs. Lodge has to get all the facts. Facts? But that old witch knows more about us than I do. Yes, but Mrs. Lodge says we still must have a formal interview. All right, Mary, if she wants to be fancy about this, we'll be fancier. We'll put on the Ritz for her till she thinks she's interviewing Mrs. Astor's pet horse. Jug, the time has come. For what? For me to find that butch and show him a thing or two. I know everything that book says. Yeah, but look what Betty did to you. Well, that's because I'd read only the first chapter. Now, I'm a finished fighter. Finished is right. Never mind. Come on. Okay, it's your funeral. Yes, sir. I'll show him. I'll faint with my left. Then I'll faint with my right. Then he'll cross with his left. And you'll faint all over. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, listen, I can... Archie! Archie ain't through. Oh, golly, Veronica. Hello, Veronica. Hello, Archie. Where y'all all going on? Well? Oh, are you finished? <laughs> I thought there was one more all. <laughs> Silly boy. <laughs> what you doing, Archie? Hmm? I'm looking for Butch McGonagall. For Butch? Why? To settle a score, Veronica, the way real he-men do. My goodness, you mean a fight? That's right. A fight to the end. But, Archie, dear, you're so handsome. So what? So good-looking. So what? Your face is so young and gay. So what? And Butch is going to make such a mess of it. So uh, Veronica... Don't talk that way. Well, he will. Butch is awful tough. Yes, but I'm tougher. I come from fighting stock. Really? Sure. My grandfather used to fight with my grandmother all the time. Why, Archie, I had no idea you're so brave. Brave isn't the word for it, Veronica. I'm obnoxious. Also delirious. Anyway, I'm a great fighter. Well, in that case, Archie, you should fight the masked marvel. The... The, the what? The masked marvel. He's appearing in Riverdale tonight and offering a hundred dollars to anybody who can knock him out in three rounds. Oh, gee whiz, I hadn't heard about it. Well, of course. Come on, Archie. I'll drive you down to the gym and you can sign up right away. Okay, I... Huh? Oh, oh no, Veronica. I'd love to, really. I'd like to very much, but... Well, I, I, I can't sign up to fight the masked marvel. Why not? I don't have a pencil. Archie, the trouble with you is you're so modest. <laughs> so retiring. <laughs> so, so unassuming <laughs> And uh, since I haven't anything else to do, Archie, dear <laughs> I'll stop by the gym and enter your name But I better hurry Bye now Bye, Veronica Chuck, did you hear that? She said that I'm <gasps> Sign up Me, Veronica, come back Veronica! Oh, Jughead, won't I ever learn to keep my big mouth shut? Oh, why did I ever get mixed up with fighting the masked marvel? Oh, Joe, give me another chocolate soda. Me too, Joe. Jughead, what'll I do? 
Why don't you tell them you don't want to fight? I can't do that, Jug. Not after I told Veronica what a great fighter I am and she entered my name to fight the masked marvel. Well, if I try to get out of it now, Veronica will never talk to me again. Yeah. And if I go through with the fight, nobody will ever talk to me again. Yeah. And I'm too young to die. Yeah. I got everything to live for. Yeah. I haven't done a thing to deserve this fate. Yeah. Jug, what'll I do? Bet a lot of money on the masked marvel. Why? You might as well die rich. Jughead, you're no help at all. In fact, you're just uh, a... Pardon me. Is here they're serving chocolate sodas? Yeah, right here. Jug, I want I'm you I to... love chocolate sodas. Well, that's fine. Jug, I gotta tell you're you... You're living I... in this city... Yes, I do. Jug, now... I'm a stranger I... here. Well, that's fine. Now, Jug, what All I want... All morning, to... I'm that... looking for a place that is sell chocolate soda. Look, mister, I don't know who you are, but uh, I Permit want... me to Just... make introduction of uh... myself. They are called me the Masked Marvel. Well, that's fine. My friend and I are very busy, and we just... What? <laughs> the Masked Marvel. But did you say your name was the Masked Marvel? That's right. Only without the mask. This is my real face. How can you tell? Well, gee whiz. Jug, did you hear that? <laughs> this is the masked marvel. Gee whiz. I hope I'm not intruding. Intruding? Oh, no, no, not at all, Mr. Marvel. Not at all. In fact, fate sent you to me. Yes, sir. Sit right down, Marvel. Sit right down. Andrews is my name, Archie Andrews. How do you do? We'll shake hands, yes? Oh, yes, by all means. <laughs> Yo! Marvel, don't do that. Oh. I'm sorry. I am not know my own strength. <laughs> That's all right. You uh, say you like chocolate sodas? That's right. I love chocolate sodas. Archie, we better get out of here. Not on your life, Chuck. This is my big chance. Well, they have fine sodas here, Marvel. The best in town, don't they, Jug? I said, don't they, Jug? Ouch. Yes, they have fine sodas. See, Marvel? Sit down. Oh, Joe, two chocolate sodas. Make it a double chocolate for my friend. What is double chocolate? Oh, that means an extra shot of chocolate syrup. <clears throat> I love chocolate syrup. Uh, Joe, make it a triple chocolate soda. What is triple? That means three shots of chocolate. <clears throat> I love chocolate syrup. Uh, uh, Joe, make it a glass of chocolate syrup. Straight. <laughs> What is straight? Oh, that means without any seltzer. You don't want them putting any water in that delicious chocolate syrup. <clears throat> I love chocolate syrup. Archie, are you quiet, Jug? Ah, here we are, Marvel. A soda for me and a glass of lovely chocolate syrup for you. Drink up. <clears throat> Marvel, did you finish that glass of syrup already? <clears throat> I love chocolate syrup. <laughs> oh, brother. Uh, how do you feel? Hungry. What? Well, the uh, Marvel, I'll order you a special American dish. <clears throat> I love special American dishes. Yes, you love this. Uh, uh, Joe, give my friend one large buttered pickle. Yes, you heard me. What is buttered pickle? Oh, you'll see, Marvel. You'll love it. It's a favorite food in this country. Lots of people eat it. Yeah. And they're all in straitjackets. <laughs> Jug, quiet. Ah, there you are, Marvel. Now, doesn't that look good? Da, da. Help yourself. Mm, good, good. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, put a little salt and pepper on it. It's better that way. Mm, better, better. Well, Marvel, how do you feel now? I, I, I... Ay, 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 Well, it finally worked, Jug. Archie, where's your handlebar mustache? Oh, it was a dirty trick, Jug, but it's a case of survival of the fittest, and I don't think the masked marvel is very fit anymore. <laughs> What do you want? Well, I uh, wanted to get some information about the fight tonight. Why? Well, I'm Archie Andrews. I understand my name has entered to fight the Marvel. Archie Andrews? Why, well, yeah, he... What? You're Archie Andrews? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? And you expect to stay three rounds with the Marvel? That's right. 
<laughs> well, all right. The fans like to see a little bloodshed. And I guess you've got some. Some what? Blood. Oh, fine. Pardon me. Hello? Who? Marvel? What? Sick? But Marvel, you got to fight to... What? But Marvel, listen. Hello? Hello? Oh, for God's sake. That stupid ape. Do you know what he's done? What? Gone and got sick, that's what. Oh, is that so? And the tickets all sold out. And the fight was going to be broadcast. Well, gee, that's too bad. I'll have to call the whole thing off. Oh, what wouldn't I give for another fighter? Well, Archie, we might as well... Well, Wait a minute. I got an idea, Jug. Jug, come back here. Archie, you've had enough ideas for one day. But this one is colossal. Mister, just what would you give for another fighter? What would I give? Anything. Name it and it's yours. My life. My fortune. Twenty bucks. It's a deal. I got just the guy for you. He can wear the same outfit the masked Marvel wears, and nobody will ever know the difference. Yeah, but can he fight? Can he fight? He's a wildcat, isn't he, Jug? Yeah. He's a killer, isn't he, Jug? Yeah. He's a madman in the ring, isn't he, Jug? Yeah. Great. What's his name? Jughead Jones, isn't it, Jug? Yeah. Why? <laughs> but Archie... Okay, it's a deal. Here's the 20. Sold. Your fighter will be here at 8 o'clock. So long. Archie. I am positively not... Jug, going... don't be silly. There's nothing to be afraid of. You'll be in the ring with me. Gee, that's right. I get a chance to impress Veronica, and you get 20 bucks. Well, okay. Atta boy. But let me see the money. Oh, here you are. Archie, that's only 10. Well, naturally, as your manager, I get half, don't I? Archie, somehow the odds are always against me. <laughs> Now, Mary, all we have to do is follow my plan and our worries will be over. Plan? Exactly. I want to get into that country club once and for all if it's the last thing I do. Why, do you realize what it would mean to my business, to our social standing, to, 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 to everything? Oh, yes, dear, I do. Good. Now, then, here's what we do. You get out your evening gown and my tuxedo. But... Well, what on earth for? To impress Mrs. Lodge. Oh. And, and we'll fix the place up fancy. Candles on the dining room table. Uh -huh. uh, uh, good books lying all around the room, casually. Uh, everything soft and refined. Oh, I see. Uh, Mrs. Lodge will think she's on Park Avenue. Of course, there is just one hitch. Yes? Uh, where is Archie? Oh, he just phoned to say he won't be home for dinner. Why, Mary, that's fine. In fact, that makes everything just perfect. Good evening, folks. This is Clem McCarthy, about to bring you the big fight. The masked Marvel against the local contender. Uh, what's that name, Joe? Oh, yes, Archie Andrews. The Riverdale Killer. The referee is in the ring, and yes, here comes Killer Andrews now. Andrews is climbing through the ropes. He bows to the crowd. He's waving to somebody. Oh, yes, to the girlfriend sitting at the ringside. Ah, there's one thing you have to say for this Andrews. For a fellow who's going up against the masked marble, he's showing a lot of self-confidence. Yes, sir, plenty of confidence. Well, Jones, all set? Yes, sir. Okay, now put on this mask and hood the Marvel wears, and whatever you do, don't take it off. Yes, sir. I was just going... Well, what are you doing? Marvel, what are you doing here? I thought you were sick. I was, but I'm better now. Oh, that's wonderful. Terrific, in fact. How did you recover so quickly? I found out what was wrong with me. And what was wrong? I was only hungry. <laughs> Gee whiz. Well, I'm glad you got here. You get into your mask quick. They're waiting. Well, Jones, what are you looking so scared about? You don't have to fight now. I know, but I'm thinking about a guy who does. Archie, you Archie. Gee, hello, Veronica. Oh, Archie, dear, I just want to wish you luck before the fight. Oh, gee, that's sweet of you, Veronica. And, and I want to tell you, I'm terribly, terribly proud of you. Gee, thanks. Oh, look, here comes the masked marvel now. Look at those muscles, and those shoulders, and those legs. I'm still looking at those muscles. He's terribly husky. 
Yeah, he does seem to have gained weight. Who? Uh, jo- I, I, I mean, the marble. Oh, the referee's calling me, Veronica. I gotta get out there. Okay, Archie, good luck. Andrews and the marble are in the center of the ring. They shake hands. The referee is giving them final instructions. Now, as I look at the two men, this fight sizes up as a contest of age, weight, and experience against youth, ambition, and uh, ignorance. Well, the fight is on. They look at each other, spar for openings, just feeling each other out. The marble faints with the left and throws a savage white to Andrew's chin. And Andrew staggers back on his heels. The crowd goes wild. Jug, for gosh sake, take it easy. Uh, you want to hurt me or something? Isn't this exciting, Veronica? Oh, yes, it is, Betty. Hi, Betty. Hi, Veronica. Oh, hello, Jug. Can I sit here with you? Of course, Jug. But shouldn't you be in Archie's corner? Betty, I don't think Archie would be glad to see me now. Jughead, for gosh sake, take it easy. Oh, oh don't you think that hurts? Oh! Jug! Do you have to hit so hard? Oh, don't answer that question. Boxing fans, so far the Andrews boy is being cautious, just feeling out the masked marble. The marble throws a left at Andrews' nose, a right to Andrews' stomach. Andrews is cautious. The marble crosses with a right to Andrews' head, a left to Andrews' eye. Andrews is cautious. The marble jabs with his left, then throws a right. Andrews is cautious. The marble sends a stiff right to Andrews' chin. Andrews is cautious. Another stiff right. Andrews is wobbly. He's going down. No, he's staying up. No, he's going down. He's weaving like a pendulum. The masked marble is moving in for the kill. Andrews is backing away and fires the bell, ending round one. I don't think Archie did so well. He certainly didn't. Look at him. Jug, go see if you can help him. I don't know, Veronica. Go ahead, Jug. He's all in. Well, okay. Hey, Archie, Archie, how you doing? Well, hi, Jug. I'm doing okay, I guess. I can't see him. I, I don't understand it. I, I didn't know Jug could hit so hard. <gasps> Jughead, what, what are you doing here? I, I mean, who is that over there? <gasps> oh, Jug, tell me it isn't so. Not... It oh. is. Oh, you mean... You mean... I'm fighting the real masked marble? You're sure not fighting me. Oh, but I can't, Jug. I mean, the marble. You better get I mean... out there, Archie. Yeah, but, Jug. Yeah? Tell my folks I died bravely, will you? <laughs> oh, uh, by the by, Mrs. Lodge, terribly sorry my son isn't here, but he sends his regrets. He had to, uh, <laughs> that, that is, he, he was going to, uh, 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 Mary, darling? Uh, uh, yes, darling. Uh, just where did the boy say he was going? Uh, to a lecture, I believe. Ah, yes, a lecture. A very intellectual <laughs> boy, Archie. But then, uh, why shouldn't he be? <laughs> yes, why? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> How am I doing? Fine, darling. Oh, uh, darling, why don't you uh, turn on some music? I believe the opera is on. Father, conversation is always so charming with music. Don't you agree, Mrs. Lodge? Oh, yes, Mrs. Lodge. We always <laughs> listen to the opera. <laughs> now, about your charming country club, Mrs. Lodge, I was wondering if... A mass marble is putting in. He chaps with a left. Oh, another my left. Mary, you've got some again. prize fights. And See now, if you can get some music. Oh, I do Andrews detest prize fights, away. Mrs. Lodge, don't you? There's something crude and cheap about... Pra- yes, Andrews? Did he say Andrews? Oh, no, Mary. It, 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 it must be some other Andrews. Mary. Mary, for gosh sake, turn that confounded thing off. I mean, uh, darling, shut the radio, will you please? Uh, just, uh, so, oh. uh, Mrs. Lodge, where are you going? Mrs. Lodge, I'm sure I can explain it. Oh. Well, I've never in all my life been so embarrassed, Fred. Uh, Fred, where are you going? Mary, if that boy of mine wants to fight, I'll give him something to fight about. They're in a clinch now in Andrew's corner. Andrew's is hanging on for dear life. He won't let go. Archie, let me go with the towel. Not yet, Judge. I got an idea. For God's sake, Archie, no more ideas. This one will work, Judge. Andrews, let me go and fight. What's the rush, Marble? Going to get another chocolate soda? Oh, please don't talk about chocolate sodas. A nice, syrupy chocolate soda? Just think, Marble. Andrews, shut up. 
What's wrong with a lovely, gooey glass of chocolate syrup? Oh, you are giving me a bellyache. Stop it. With chocolate ice cream. Margie, let me throw in the towel. Nothing going, Jug. Not until I try the old one-two like it said in that book. Folks, something is going on up there. Something very strange in that ring. Something mighty strange. They've broken out of that clinch. Now they're in an argument. They're shouting at each other. This is really a grudge fight. Uh Uh-uh. The marvel dropped his guard. He's holding his stomach. He seems to have... Wait a minute. Andrew sees his chance. He's moving in. A left to Marvel's chin. A right to the heart. A left. Another right. And Marvel goes down. Marvel is out cold. The referee is counting. But wait a minute. Andrews has collapsed, too. The referee doesn't know who to count out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is prize fight history. Pour another bucket of water on him, Jug. Okay, stand back. Where? What happened? Where is he? Where? Wait. You're Where? in your dressing room, Archie. How do you feel? I don't. Is, is the fight over? Where is he? It sure is. Oh, there you are, young man. But the next round is just beginning. Hello, Mr. Andrews. Hello, Jughead, Veronica. I would like to see Archie alone, if you don't mind. We were just leaving, Mr. Andrews. Bye, Archie. Good luck, Archie. Hello, Dad. What are you doing here? Young man, at the moment, I am much more interested in what you were doing here. Well, Dad, you Young see, man, I happened you've to you've get... been through some pretty fantastic and asinine escapades. Uh, yes, but, but Dad, none I... of them has ever been more embarrassing to your mother and myself than this. Uh, yes, but, I Dad, have you don't never understand. in all my I... life heard of such ridiculous and stupid behavior. Yes, but, Dad, if you I just... I have talked to you and warned you and <laughs> tried to advise you, but all to no avail. So this time, Archie, this time I intend well, to take Andrew, steps. Feel okay? Well, yes, I, I guess Good. so. Good. Well, I just wanted to tell you that in all my years in the fight game, I've never seen anything like that waltz tonight. Well, yes, I know. I do I... me a favor, will you? Yes. Don't ever show your face around here again. Here's your money. Goodbye. Ah, you see, Archie, just what I was telling you when that man came in here and, and uh, Archie. Did he say money? Uh huh. What money? The money for knocking out that guy, the, the masked marvel, Dad. See? One hundred dollars. One hundred dollars? Yeah, that's right, Dad. But uh, what was that you were about to say? Me? Oh, well, Archie, I, I was about to. Uh, I was about to say that. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, hundred dollars just for one evening's work, eh? <laughs> well, uh, oh, I was about to say, son, that there is nothing more important than the manly art of self-defense. Archie Andrews and all the gang. Written by Carl Jampel and based on the copyrighted feature appearing in Archie Comics magazine. Archie is played by Bob Hastings, Jughead by Harlan Stone. The part of Clem McCarthy was played by Clem McCarthy. Others in the cast include Alice Yerman, Ian Martin, Gloria Mann, and Rosemary Rice, Felix McGuire at the organ. And now back to Archie. Archie, did you ever settle your score with Butch? Well, Veronica... Yes and no. Yes and no? Yeah, after the fight with the masked marvel, I decided to teach Butcher lessons. Well, how'd you make out? Well, not so good. You know that book I read? Yes. Butcher's uncle wrote it. Listen next week for more of the merry adventures of Archie Andrews. And if you'd like to see our show, just write to Archie Andrews, NBC, Radio City 20, New York City. That's Archie Andrews, NBC, Radio City 20, New York City. Or if you live nearby and are in the neighborhood some Saturday morning, you may obtain tickets right at the studio. 
Just ask to see Archie Andrews. And now this is Bob Sherry wishing you a very pleasant weekend. So long. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. That was Archie from 1946, and now an episode of The Aldrich Family from the war years. At this time, they were pushing war bonds hard. In fact, they suggested people spend 10% of their income to buy war bonds to help fund the Americans in World War II. So here is The Aldrich Family from June 18th, 1942. The Aldrich Family, based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. Henry! Henry Aldrich! Come in, Mother. Schofield, Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn. They're more than just characters in books, for the things they say and do are the things real boys say and do. And Henry Aldrich is another of these typical American youngsters. A boy from your own block, perhaps from your own home. Now our scene opens at the Aldrich telephone. Hello, operator. I want Elm 629. Elm 629. Henry, tell him exactly what you think of him. Gee whiz, they must have arrived by now. Number, please. Operator, I just gave it to you. Elm 629. Henry? Yes, Father? Are you through with that telephone? No, sir. I'm still trying to get my number. Hello, Centerville Station. This is Henry Aldridge. I sent away for a package about ten days ago, and I wonder whether it's come yet. A package? Yes, sir. It's some Christmas cards. Did you say Christmas cards? Yes, sir. Well, if you checked them that long ago, they've probably been thrown out by now. What's that? Oh, I didn't check them. I'm still waiting for them. How's that? They're samples for next Christmas. Homer Brown and I are going to sell them from house to house, only they're not here yet, and we're worried. Give them the deuce, Henry. Well, you're talking with the ticket office. Hold the line, and I'll connect you with the express department. Well, that's what I want to talk to. Gee whiz. What does he say, Henry? He's switching me. He thinks they may have been thrown out. Thrown out? What does he think we're going to show people for samples? Hello, Centerville Express office. Hello, do you have any Christmas cards there? What's that? What did you want? This is Henry Aldridge. Henry Aldridge isn't here. I know it. He's here. Who is? Does he want to speak to me, Henry? Let go of the receiver, Homer. You're twisting me. Hello, hello. Did you want the Centerville Express office? Yes. Have Henry Aldridge's Christmas cards come? What's that? Will you speak a little louder, please? Where are my Christmas cards? You know, it's a funny thing, but it sounds as though you keep saying Christmas cards. I am. They were sent by Express. Well, this is a fine time to be calling us. You should have reported it last January. But I just ordered them in May. Well, why don't you come down here sometime and fill out a tracer? But gee whiz, don't you realize there's a war bond drive on? Watch that. We don't get those samples. We can't get any orders to buy bonds with. I'm sorry, but you'll have to come down. But wait, I... Hello? Hello? That's telling him where to get off, Henry. <laughs> Imagine. Henry? Yes, Father? Are you through? Yes, sir, for a second. Could we ask you something? Not until I put in my call. But it's important. What's it about? Why, uh, Christmas, Mr. Aldrich. Will you boys please get away from this phone? Yes, Father. Will you let us know as soon as you can discuss it, Mr. Aldrich? Sam! Yes, Alice, I'm going to phone Mr. Thomas. What are you going to say to him, Sam? I'm going to ask him quite frankly why he can't attend a few more committee meetings. You aren't going to say anything you'll be sorry for, are you? I'm not going to be one bit sorry. Here we are, ready to start a big bond club drive. Everybody's for it. They think it's a fine thing. But a few in this town aren't doing anything about it. Isn't Mr. Howard helping? He is not. There's another example. We have a chance to get some war bond show cards at cost. And Mr. Howard, the treasurer of the committee, can't show enough interest to make up his mind as to how many show cards we need. Well, dear, if I were you, I'd resign from the committee. And call off the war? Well, you can't fight it single-handed. Father! Yes? Alice, where's the phone book? It's right there on the stand. I know you've got a lot on your mind, Father, but would it be all right if I should ask you just one thing? What about? Christmas, remember? Christmas? Yes, sir. Have you bought your cards yet? Henry, will you please step out of my life while I look up this number? Hello, operator. I want Elm 232. Now, wait a minute. I just thought I'd ask my mother whether I can go down to the express office. Father, where are you going? Down to the office and put in the call. <laughs> Now, 
Now then, uh, tell me once more why you came down here to the express office. Well, I'm Henry Aldridge, and my friend and I are going to sell Christmas cards, see? Say that again, please. You're doing what? We're selling Christmas cards for next Christmas. Oh, well, I wouldn't be interested. But wait. <laughs> you told us to come down here. Here's the whole thing. We sent away for some samples, see? We're going to take orders, but you don't have to put any money down until September 1st, and we'd like to know where they are. Is that clear? Yes. Where what are? Our Christmas cards. Henry, maybe i better explain it to him. No, Homer, you'll only confuse him. All I know is there's nothing like that here. Well, what are we going to do? Here it is June, and Christmas is getting closer every month. I'll say. And gee whiz, we're going to use all the profits to join the War Barn Club. You are? Well, I'll take a good look, but I'm pretty sure that if there were any Christmas cards in this office, I'd know about it. Could one of you boys help me with this package, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Hello, Mrs. Howard. Oh, hello, Henry. Oh, thank you so much. That's all right. This is heavy, isn't it? <laughs> thank you. I always said you were a gentleman. Well, thank you, Mrs. Howard. Would you... Would you be interested in some samples of Christmas cards... Provided we can find them. <laughs> That's very funny. What is? No, really, Mrs. Howard. We're selling them for bonds. For what? Don't you know? War bonds. We're going to give 10% of our income. Wouldn't you like to have us come over as soon as our samples come and take an order? You want me to sit down on a hot day like this and pick out my Christmas cards for next winter? Why not? And, Mrs. Howard, I guess we haven't made ourselves clear. What they do is print your name on each card. That's what takes the time. Sure. Especially if they print it in old English. You mean it takes six months? Well, if you want it done right, it does. And, Mrs. Howard, if you put it off, the first thing you know, snow will be falling and the Christmas bells will be ringing. My goodness, what's that? What's what? Oh, just a freight train. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't we interest you, Mrs. Howard? <laughs> just to sort of help our drive. Well, do you have any playing cards that aren't too fancy with just Merry Christmas on them? Oh, yes, I'm pretty sure we have. And they're cheap, I think. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Mr. Howard does all the ordering, so you phone him, and if it's all right with him, it's all right with me. Well, thanks very much. Do you want your name printed in Old English? Yes, you might as well, as long as we've got plenty of time. Say, Henry, there's no ship in here that I can locate. You're sure? Oh, yep. Mr. Howard, I want to send that box of books there. Collect. It's all marked and everything. Yes, ma'am. You want to wait for a receipt? No, I'm in a hurry. I want to get home before I get stuck in a snowdrift. What's that? What's that? Merry Christmas. <laughs> What did she say? It's all right. Are you sure our package isn't here? Yes, sir. Because, gee, how are we going to buy bonds if we can't go to work? You're buying bonds? Sure, that's what this whole thing is about. Sure. Henry and I are having a drive. In conjunction with the rest of the town? Oh, sure. Well, I didn't know it was that important. Now, you say your package was shipped about how long ago? Ten days ago, wouldn't you say, Home? That's the way I figure it. I see. Do you know whether it had anything breakable in it? Breakable? Yes, any glass. Glass? No, I wouldn't say so. Would you, Homer? No, I've never seen a glass one that I can remember. No, I'd say definitely no glass. Uh -huh. Well, let's fill out one of these blanks here and see whether we can get a tracer started. And please make it urgent. Oh, yes. And add no glass. Do you think it'll take very long? Because until it gets here, we're practically at a standstill. Well, I don't suppose I ought to do it, but since it's connected with the Bond Club Drive, I'll send the main express office a wire. <laughs> Hello, is this Mr. Bush's office? Mr. Bush? Now, this is Sam Ulrich. Say, I was just talking with Ted Thomas. I asked him to do a little work on this bond club committee, and he seemed very much pleased. Yes? In fact, he said he was for it 100%. Fine. The only thing is, he says he's sorry. He has a couple of other things that he's going to have to give his time to, and he suggested you take his place. Now, that's for the bond committee, Sam? Yes. Ah, uh, it's fine. That's just fine. Glad to have the opportunity. In fact, I'm 500% for it. Well, that's fine. Now, I'll tell you what we want you to do. Now, now wait, Sam. Wait. Before we get too far into this, I... Unfortunately, I have a lot of work on my desk. It's already way behind. You have? Yes, I'm a little ashamed of myself to let it go this far, especially at a time like this. I see. I'll tell you what I'll do. Get hold of John Clark. He's the man for you. John Clark? Yes, yes. I was having lunch with him yesterday. He was saying he wished he could do something to help out. He said he felt so useless. He did? Well, that's fine. As a matter of fact, Sam, why don't you call him yourself? It's easy for you to make direct contact. All right, thanks. Oh, that's okay, Sam. Anything else I can do? Don't hesitate calling. Fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, that's a fine thing. Here's a letter for you, Mr. Aldrich. Thank you. Put it on my desk. Is Mr. Bush against the bond drive? No, no. He's very much for it. In fact, he's 500% for it. That's more than anyone else I've called up this morning. 
Did you talk to Mr. Howard? Yes, he said he doesn't think a thousand show cards are necessary to advertise the bonzars. What does he want us to do? Keep it a secret? Well, he said he wants to think it over and you're to call him back. Are you going to ask Mr. Clark to help you? Not right away. I'm going to sit down and rest a minute. <laughs> See the telegram the express company sent us. I still can't believe it, Homer. Read it again. It says Aldridge, Centerville, have no record shipment of Christmas trees this year. <laughs> Wire further details collect. Well, if that isn't the darndest thing, how could people be so dumb, Henry? What do you think we ought to say in reply? Tell them we can't understand their telegram. Will they please wire us more details? Well, that isn't going to get us anywhere, Homer. We've got to send them a very careful explanation. All right, only I don't know how we're going to do it in ten words. Why should we worry about ten words? They say send it collect. You got a pencil? Sure. What do we say? Gentlemen. <laughs> Gentlemen. Then how about don't want Christmas trees? Sure. That'll tell them. We cannot purchase war bonds because order we placed ten days ago has not arrived. Sure. Have you misplaced Christmas cards? Some of those were New Year's cards, Homer. They were? Let's just say... Have you misplaced holiday greetings? That's good. That'll tell the whole story. <laughs> Here, Homer, take it over to the ticket office and finish writing it down while I phone Mr. Howard. What for? Tell him his wife wants him to place an order with us. You know, the more I think about this telegram, the better I like it. What's Mr. Howard's number? 855. 855? Five, five. Sure. Number, please. Uh, Elm, 855. Five. Elm, 855. Five. Henry, do you think we ought to cut out any of this just to reduce the cost? What do you think? Well... The only word that isn't necessary is gentlemen. Why should they have to pay to be called a thing like that? <laughs> okay, scratch it out. Mr. Howard speaking. Hello, this is Henry Aldridge. What did you say, Aldridge? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, you're calling about the cards, aren't you, Aldridge? The cards? Yes, sir. Well, that's a coincidence. I was just sitting here thinking about them. You were? About how large are they? Well, I'm sorry... But the samples aren't here yet. Have you any ideas of the price? You mean by the dozen? Oh, you aren't trying to be sarcastic, are you, Aldridge? What's that? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. If your heart's set on it, I'll settle for 500. What's that? But not one more. That's all we have. 500? That's right. Well, what kind of lettering would you like on them? Something in the way of Old English? Old English? Uh, don't you think block letters would be easier to read at a distance? At a distance? Well, they're going to be tacked up on telephone poles, aren't they? <laughs> are they? Is this Mr. Howard? Yes, this is still Mr. Howard. Are you sure you want 500? Yes, sir. We can cover this town easily with that. Goodbye. Homer! Homer! Hi, Henry. Gee whiz, we've got to send another telegram to the express company and hurry them up. Why? Mr. Howard's taking 500. In old English? <laughs> Have you seen this, Joe? What is it? The adjustment desk sent it up to us. It's a telegram from Centerville, signed Aldrich. Well, what's it about? Well, I don't understand it. It says, don't want Christmas trees. Cannot purchase war bonds because order placed ten days ago not arrived. Have you misplaced holiday greetings? Well, that's clear enough. What sense do you make out of it? Well, they're having some kind of a bond drive. But what are they using Christmas trees for? Don't ask me. Uh, probably for decorations. And they decided it was a bad idea. But we don't have any shipment of trees. All right, fine. And everybody's happy. Yeah, but, Joe, why do they say, have you misplaced holiday greetings? Hey, what's that? Isn't that a period right after misplaced? Is that a period? Sure, but it ought to be a question mark. Here's how it goes. Cannot purchase war bonds because order placed ten days ago has not arrived. Have you misplaced? Question mark. Holiday greetings. Order. <laughs> What are the holiday greetings for? I don't know. Isn't next Sunday Father's Day? <laughs> well, sure, but how do they know I'm a father? And look at this, Joe. What they're looking for is a shipment of bonds. Of war bonds? Yes, that's so right there. The driver's held up because we misplaced the shipment. Gee, Bill, that's a pretty serious thing. Uh, telegram, Mr. Cooper. Well, what's this one about? I don't know, but it's marked right. Oh, it's another one from Aldrich. It says, must have shipment. Have sold 500. Holiday greetings. <laughs> Polite guy, isn't he? <laughs> We're going to get into trouble, Bill. You better send that up to the superintendent and let him try to figure it out. Now getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Henry and Homer had planned to take orders for Christmas cards in order to make enough money to buy a war bond. When the samples for the cards did not arrive, they wired the express company. They wired a second time. 
While the boys are waiting at the station for a second reply, the scene opens in Mr. Aldrich's office. Hello? Is this John Clark? This is Mr. Clark. Well, this is Sam Aldrich, John. Yes? I was talking with Mr. Bush this morning about our bond drive. I wanted him to do some work on one of the committees. Yes, is he going to? Well, he wants to. He's for us 500%. But he's tied up right now, and he suggested I call you and see whether you couldn't help us out. Well, that's fine. That's fine. I'm glad you called. Good. Now I'll tell you what we'd like to have you do. Uh, Now, wait, Sam. Uh, Is this something that has to be done in the next few days? Yes, it'll have to be. Well, that's too bad. Uh, Because after next week, I could give you all the time you want. But you can't right now. Well, you know how things are in my business, Sam. I'm with your heart and soul, but my hands are tied. I see. You know me, Sam. I'm for this drive a thousand percent. I wish you luck. Goodbye. Goodbye. Here's a box that just arrived, Mr. Aldridge. A box? What's in it? A supply of 10% pledge buttons for the bond drive. Are they all 10%? Aren't any of them a 1,000%? Hello, Sam Aldridge speaking. Uh, this is Howard. Yes, Howard. Sorry I was out when you called, but I got your message. My message? Yes, and I don't understand it. What message are you referring to? Whether I prefer red or green envelopes. For what? For the cards, the show cards. Why would we want envelopes for them? That's what I'm asking you. But we certainly don't want to go to the expense of ordering a 1,000 envelopes. A 1,000? Now, look here, Aldrich. We agreed to order only 500 cards. Oh, we did? So let's not spend any more time discussing it. I've got a lot of things on my mind. Are you too busy to come to a meeting at 2? I'm afraid I am, Sam. I've got a late luncheon engagement. But you call me when it's over and let me know what you did. Yes, of course. Goodbye, Sam. Goodbye. Sam! Alice, what are you doing down here at the office? Sam, I thought we were going to meet for lunch. I've been waiting in front of the Emporium for half an hour for you. I'm sorry, Alice, but I've got work to do on the Bond Club parade. Dear, do you have to work this hard? Why can't Henry help you? Now, Alice, what good can one boy do? Read it again, Henry. I've already read it four times, honey. Well, read it again. I can't believe it. Aldridge, Centerville, greetings to you. Entire force trying to trace shipment for bond drive. If unable, locate, advise reordering through Treasury Department. Please wire further wishes. They're crazy, Henry. And it's signed by the general superintendent. Well, that's what's the trouble. Do you know what my father does when he can't get action? What? He goes straight to the president of the company. Does that help? Sure. Let me have your pencil. Here. Gee whiz, don't they realize we're losing orders left and right? And Henry, what about the big parade? We don't want to ride on a float if we haven't even bought our bond. That's what I say. What are you writing? President of the Express Company. Time is growing short. Now, how about time is shortening? Yeah, time is shortening. Losing orders. What will we do about barn parade? Please send greetings. That's telling them, Homer. Do you think it's clear? Clear? Why, it's as plain as day. And look, just as soon as we've sent this, let's call Mr. Howard again. What for? I just thought of something else we forgot to ask him. calls while I was out for lunch with Graham? Yes, Mr. Howard. Mr. Aldrich's son phoned. His son? What did he want? He's apparently helping his father. He wanted to know whether you want your middle initial printed on the cards. On what cards? On the show cards, I imagine, for the bond drive. They're going to print my name on them? I imagine they are. I'm supposed to call Mr. Aldrich back. Well, I didn't realize they were going to do anything like that. The Aldrich boy asked about Mrs. Howard, too, but I explained that she has nothing to do with this. That's fine. Uh, Miss Gray, now, uh, how many of those cards did I tell you to order? 500. Yes, well, I don't think 500 will be enough. Do you? I don't know, sir. As a matter of fact, that wouldn't be anywhere near enough. Now, here's what you do. Call Sam Aldrich, see? Yes, sir. Tell him we want at least 1,000 cards. With or without your middle initial. If he doesn't mention it, don't you. After all, I don't want him to think my name has anything to do with doubling the order. Yes, sir. Besides, I don't really care whether the J, the J is in or not. Yes, Mr. Howard. <laughs> Mr. Aldridge. Yes, Miss Thompson. The editor of the Times is here. He wants you to go over some coffee with him. Yes, of course. Tom, come on in. Oh, hello, Sam. I just stopped by to show you the story about the bond driver running tonight's paper. Fine, fine. Better give it the front page. Nearly half a column. Yes, half a column. You couldn't spare any more than that? Well, half a column's quite a bit, Sam. Tells the whole story. The only thing is... Sam, you know me. I'm for this drive, but I can't overdo it. After all, my subscribers expect to find some news in the paper. The only thing is, Tom, the other paper is going to give their entire front page. We need the same from you. You mean some of the folks are against this drive? No, most of this town is working its head off. But there are a few, Tom, that need waking up. They're the ones we've got to sell on investing 10% of their income for the rest of this war. Ah, oh, don't you worry, Sam. Everything's going to be fine. Uh, excuse me. Hello, Sam Aldrich speaking. Uh, Mr. Aldrich, this is Centerville Station. We got a telegram here for you. A telegram for me? I think it's for you. It came in while I was out. It says Aldrich, Centerville. Now, go ahead. Who's it from? Uh, the president of the Express Company. From whom? What's he say? What's it about? Uh, he says, uh, greetings. I'm doing everything 
in my power to facilitate your bond drive. If you do not get fullest cooperation from our local representative, please wire. Well, well, and you say that's from the president himself? Yeah. And he's doing everything in his power to facilitate our bond drive? Yeah. And what's the rest? If we do not get fullest cooperation from local representatives, please wire? Yeah, and greetings. Greetings, yeah, but that's not the important part. And you say it's signed by the president? Yes, sir. Are you sure that's for me? It's addressed to Aldridge. Well, then I guess it is. Yeah, goodbye, Mr. Aldridge. Goodbye. Well, Sam. What's that, Tom? Isn't everybody that gets a telegram like that? I beg your pardon? Now, tell me frankly, Sam, about how much space do you think this paper ought to give to make this drive a success? Well, to tell the truth, that should be up to you. But we'd like a lot more than we're getting. A great deal more. And frankly, Sam, I think you should have it. Oh, excuse me. Hello, Sam Aldridge speaking. Oh, Mr. Aldridge, this is Mr. Howard's secretary. Yes? Mr. Howard wanted me to tell you that if you feel we need a thousand of those show cards, it's all right. Yes? Well, I'm glad he came around to my point of view. I'm just sorry I didn't ask for 1500 Well, I think it would be all right if you ordered 1500 You mean it's all right with Mr. Howard? Oh, yes. And print them any way you want to. Yes? Well, that's fine. Uh, Sam, may I speak with Howard? Uh, Miss Gray, is Mr. Howard there? Well, just a minute. I'll call him. Yeah, Tom. Thanks. Mr. Aldridge, there's a gentleman in the outer office that wants to see you. To see me? From the express company. Yeah? Uh, excuse me, Tom. I'll be right back. Hello? Uh, Howard, this is Tom from over at the Times. Yes? Did you know that Sam Mulrich just got a personal wire from the president? No. Yes. And he told Sam if he doesn't get the fullest cooperation from us, he wants to... Hello. Hello. Is this Clark? Yes. Well, Clark, this is White. Say, you know that golf game we were going to have tomorrow? Yes. Well, would you mind our postponing it for a couple of weeks? I'm going to be pretty busy on the Bond Club drive. Oh, you are? Oh, yes, yes. I don't know whether you know it or not, but the president's taking a personal interest in it. Sam Aldrich got a wire from Washington and confidentially... Mr. Howard, I have your wife on the phone now. Thank you. Uh, hello, Jenny. Yes? This is J.J. I won't be home for dinner, Jen. Why not? I've got to do some work on the Bond Committee. Probably be midnight before I get home. But, J.J., I've arranged a bridge game for tonight. Well, cancel it. The bond drive's more important. Yes, dear. Oh, has Henry Aldrich been in touch with you? No, what about? Christmas cards. Jenny, this is no time to think about Christmas cards. Goodbye. Hello? Hello, is this Sam Aldrich? Yes. Well, this is Clark. Say, Sam, why didn't you call me again? What about? The bond drive. We can't sit back and expect you to carry the whole load. Well, I certainly appreciate that. Don't you think we ought to talk to folks into investing 15% each week instead of just 10? Well, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Going by. Which one? The one just coming up to the reviewing stand. Oh, yes, yes, very good. Is the float that Henry and Homer are on in sight yet? Uh, not yet. They ought to be along in a minute, though. The sandwich company here in town bought the most bonds. The express company. The express company? Yes, for some reason, the main office in Chicago wired that they'd be willing to top the pledge of any firm in town. Well, what's that nice of? Hey, you know those show cards now went okay, but pretty good. Well, When he gets home, there's a package at the house from the Excelsior Greeting Card Company. Yes? Yes, it came this morning by parcel post. Yes? Sam! Sam, here comes the float that Henry's on. Where? Way down the street. See it, Sam? See it? Oh, yes. Sam went to get the truck. The express company loaned it. <laughs> but Sam, why are Henry and Homer in track suits? They're supposed to be relay races, Alice, don't you see? Oh. Oh, yes. Isn't that nice? What is that that Henry's handing over to Homer? A torch, Alice. See the sign above them? They represent the spirit of total effort. A total what? Effort, Alice. Effort. This drive is the greatest thing this town has ever had. Well, I hope you enjoyed these great old episodes. Thanks for listening to Gee Whiz. I'm John Henderson. If you'd like to learn more about these shows, check out thisdaybenny.com.